Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. I'm Dr. Harper. This lecture video contains only introductory material. More detailed information will be contained in other instructional videos and my course. This video is based on material from PM Bach Guide, 5th edition, 2013, published by the Project Management Institute. A simple description of project management is the art and science of transforming an idea into a product or service. Project management is as much an art as a science. You need the science, but the more you do project management, it becomes an art. Next, the transformation of an idea into a product or service distinguishes project management from operations management. Where operations management transforms inputs to outputs, project management transforms ideas into deliverables. And this distinction is essential to be maintained for operations to continue to run smoothly and efficiently and for projects to achieve success on time and within budgets. The origination of ideas for projects can indicate the importance of the project and determine how the project is to be conducted. For example, if it's a need the quality of the project deliverable could be important to ensure the deliverable satisfies the need. If it's an opportunity, the process can be as important as the deliverable in order to take advantage of the opportunity to learn as much as possible to enhance the organizational assets. Or if it's a directive, when the project has to be done, then obtaining the deliverable as quickly and efficiently as possible could be indicated. What is a project? A simple description is a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service. There are two aspects of this statement. First, temporary. The next is unique. And that distinguishes a project from ongoing operations. First, time. Projects have a start and a stop. Ongoing operation starts and just keeps going. Next is uniqueness. Each project should be considered as a unique project. The conditions can be different, the challenges can be different, and changes will happen. Ongoing operations, uh, you want consistency and efficiency so you can become more productive. And finally, the objectives. Well, the objectives of your project is focusing on your deliverables. The objective of ongoing operations is focusing on productivity. What is project management? Project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities that fulfills the project scope on time within budget in order to meet or exceed stakeholder needs and expectations. Within this statement, there are a number of phrases. Project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques. These come from PM Bach, the project management body of knowledge. And that describes the characteristic of integration the application to project activities that fulfills the project scope on time within budget. Scope, time, and budget is referred to as the triple constraint. And the characteristic there is flexibility. In order to meet or exceed stakeholder needs and expectations, that's the success of a project. And there's where you have the characteristic of focus. You must always be focused on the stakeholder, which defines success. Key project management terms. I have this project management checklist of five things that should always exist in a project, whether it's large or small, either formally or informally. A project charter will initiate the project. Because of the temporary nature of the project, the initiation of the project is essential to know that the project is started. The scope statement defines the project. If it's not in the scope statement, it shouldn't be done. If it's done, it's in the scope statement. Integrated change control. Expect change and plan for change. Stakeholder analysis. Stakeholder analysis will help in defining the project, communicating, and validating the success of a project. The project management plan contains all the details within the project and everything that's done as far as the work is concerned and the communications would be in that project management plan. Now whether these are done formally or informally, all five of these must be done within each project. Next, we have the project management life cycles. A traditional project management from PM Bach, you have your scope, plan, launch, monitor, control, and close. 
Scope is what you're doing. Plan is how you're doing it. Launching is doing it. Monitoring and controlling is keeping on track. And closing is stopping it. In Wysocki, he takes the traditional project management and defines it as a linear and incremental. And then he goes into agile project management and extreme project management. And the life cycle process then becomes scope, plan, launch. And then monitor, control, close. And he adds the next and close for the agile and the extreme. The project management organizational structure is important to know how effective a project can be and how to conduct projects. The general organizational structure is you have your executive management, administration, functional areas or line managers, and then the projects. But in the project management structure, you can have a project management office, the PMO, portfolio management, program management underneath the portfolio, and then project management underneath the program. So a number of projects could define a program, and a number of programs could define a portfolio, and that portfolio is going to be part of your project management office that coordinates all three of these together within your functional administration executive program. The functional organizational chart has the line managers in charge of the staff. And in this case, there is no project manager. And you identify maybe a staff member or maybe a line manager, but uh, this has the least amount of authority allocated to the project manager. On the other side, the project organizational chart has project managers. And notice there's no line managers. So the line managers really would be part of a staff member or part of a project manager uh, on the different projects. In the project organizational chart, the project manager has the most authority. And then you have a matrix organizational chart where you have your line managers and you have your project managers. And so this would require the most coordination. The way the authority is distributed between the project manager and line managers determines whether you have a strong matrix, weak matrix, or balanced matrix. When the authority is shifted toward the project manager, that's referred to as a strong matrix organizational chart. And when the line managers have more authority than the project managers, that's a weak. And where they're shared, that's going to be a balanced. So the organizational authority and coordination uh, for the project manager, if you have low authority and low coordination, that's most, mostly functional uh, project management. Uh, very high project manager authority and high coordination is strong matrix. The most project manager authority would be with the project management. And the weak matrix will have uh, low authority but high coordination. The stakeholder is anyone or anything that is involved with, has interest in, or stands to gain or lose from a project. Now the stakeholder importance is they support the definition of project expectations. They facilitate project execution and control. And they validate the success of a project. And this important is key from the beginning, during the operations, and also to define the closure and success of a project. So stakeholders could be sponsors, project managers, team members. They could be groups of people like vendors or customers. They could be things like a community or the environment. But all the stakeholders need to be recognized, managed, and analyzed because they, again, will define the project, manage the project, and then define success of a project. A key stakeholder is the project manager. The project manager is responsible for all aspects of the project, from the beginning, designing and planning, from the internal management and coordination, and the external communication and representation, from the beginning to the end, internally and externally, the project manager is the key stakeholder in projects. The content of the guide to PM Bach includes terminology and structure. Here are some of the terms. Cycles, we've already seen the project life cycle. You can also have a product life cycle. Phases have to do with timing. The project life cycle phases are scope, plan, launch. Project time phases have to do with phase one, phase two, and product life cycle phases are things like prototype, alpha test, final product. The structure is broken up into processes, 
which is work to be done, and they group them in five different groups. The objective of the processes are contained in the knowledge areas, and there are 10 knowledge areas. The ITTL, or inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs, are the details of the processes within the knowledge areas. The structure of the organization is given by this table. There are 10 knowledge areas and 47 management processes. The 10 knowledge areas are the heading of each of these lists, and within the list are processes which define the knowledge areas. Here we have six, here we have seven, here we have three, four. The relationship between the knowledge areas, process groups, and processes are given by this table. Here's our 10 knowledge areas, and these are the processes as they are grouped within the process groups. We have our initiating processes, or planning and executing, and closing, and the monitoring and controlling really is from the beginning to the end. In Pionbach, the knowledge areas are broken down into the different processes, and then in turn they're broken down into the inputs, tools, and techniques, or outputs, the ITTOs. For example, project cost management in the Pionbach will have four processes. Underneath each process will be their ITTOs. For example, Plan cost management will have these inputs, these tools and techniques, and these outputs. But if you notice in the inputs, we have the enterprise environmental factors and the organizational process assets. These are two very common inputs and common outputs. The enterprise environmental factors are external, organizational process assets are internal, and often they are outputs to enhance the organizational assets. So for every knowledge area in PMBOK, this is the breakdown to the processes and the ITTOs. But even though you have all these processes available, in project management, you usually do not use all of them. You only use those processes and tools and techniques that are appropriate for your particular project. And there's where the art comes into project management. And the trade-offs and coordination between the art and science of project management are what I will emphasize in my other instructional videos and my course. So this ends the video on project management introduction and overview. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.